Okay, this event is recording. Okay, is it five o'clock yet? Um, about three minutes too. Okay, we'll wait. So, who do I have the pleasure of speaking with today? Mary. I am the land use hearing officer today. My name is Mary Woodhead. Nice to meet you. And I'm Diana. I'm the planner. Chris, we've talked a few times, but never got to see each other. So nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm, I'm Mayara Lima. I'm the zoning administrator. I'm here for just a backup support and Aubrey uh, was helping you as well. Uh, yeah, so you will be addressing Mary today. Okay. Okay, great. And even though it looks like we're all here, it's always good to wait till five to start because sometimes someone wants to show up and join in. And yeah, I know my wife was planning on it, but I don't know if she's having any difficulty. So I may ask her maybe to join me in the room since I wasn't able to get out from my laptop. Okay, this is my wife, Elizabeth. She's here with me. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Once it's been on. Okay, I think it's five. So I'm going to go ahead and start the hearing. My name is Mary Woodhead. I'm the land use hearing officer today, and we're here today for the Salt Lake City Planning Division appeals hearing. Um, and we have one item on the agenda. It's the right variance request at approximately 1924 East, 2100 South. Um, I have read the staff report and all of the materials associated with it. Um, so we don't need to necessarily repeat everything in it, but I am interested to hear everything everyone has to say. So I think I'd like to start with the city um, and just give me an overview of the variance request and the issues. And then we'll hear from the from the from the variance petitioner and um hear from the city again if needed and just make sure everyone has a chance to say what they need to say. Thank you. I'm Diana. I'm the planner with the planning division. Um, to start, the applicant has requested a variance, has requested variance approval um, to adjust or to modify ordinance 21A44020 to place a circular drive in the front setback of the subject property. Their subject property, as you know, is 1923 East, 2100 South. Um, I just wanna kind of go in for the applicant. Just, we have spoken a little bit about this back and forth through emails, but a, vari a variance is a modification to the zoning requirements and it's rarely granted. And if it is granted, it must meet the four standards for a variance. And that falls under city ordinance 21A18 or 0 .18, 0 .060. There are four main standards for variance. Now, going back to the applicant's request, they did state a hardship of parking and being able to back out of their driveway safely because of the traffic of uh, traffic uh, issues, problems um, on 2100 South and staff is very 
sympathetic to that. We understand that. However, a variance being that it has to meet the standards for approval, uh, the location of the property is not one of the standards. Standards typically go with the size, the shape, the topography of the property. Um, there is one uh, standard that states circumstance peculiar to the property. And all of these staff finds didn't really meet the, the, the property, the subject property didn't meet those standards. There is nothing to do with the, the size, the shape, or the topography of the property because most of the properties along 2100 South are very similar to the, to the subject property. And unfortunately, the traffic issues um, that, the, that the applicant is claiming, those are peculiar to all the properties along 2100 South. So staff found that that burden is on everybody, not just a special circumstance to the property owner. So based on the, the analysis and the findings of, the, of my staff report and the analysis that we went through with the standards for, for granting a variance, staff is of the opinion that it does not meet the standards for approval for the variance request. And we recommend that the appeals hearing officer deny the proposal, the proposed variance, excuse me. Um, can I ask one question? This is kind of technical, but you said 1923 East and the notice says 1924 sorry, East. Did I, it is 1924. I'm sorry if okay. I did say that. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure we have the right address. Good catch. Yes. 90, 1924 East, 2100 South. So uh, assuming this doesn't meet the variance requirements, which I haven't heard from the applicant yet, so I haven't made a decision. Are there things the applicant can do to um, mitigate this issue? There are. They're a little bit complicated and technical. We did take, I did take this back to my planning staff. I've worked with my manager extensively on this. Um, one of the main things that could be done, and it is a time sensitive situation, or it, it would involve a lot of time, is doing a, tax, a text amendment to this ordinance to where that we could modify the ordinance to read so that there was a lesser setback or no setback to having a circular driveway. That is one, one option. There is, I mean, staff is definitely willing to work with the applicant of having some kind of turnaround within their property that meets code. Um, I do have, I did talk to, and I believe the applicant did talk to the transportation engineer, Lynn Jacobs. Um, there was a proposal set for 2100 South a few years ago back that um, 2100 South would be realigned to where it would be one lane each way with a turn lane in the center. Um, Lynn Jacobs expressed that at this point, they don't know, it is going back on the table, but they don't know if there will be parking available on the sides or if it will just be bike, um, bike lanes. lanes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but that would give a little bit of a relief to the applicant, even if it was a bike lane, there could be the option of like a drop off. So needing to drop off people that needed to, to not necessarily park on their property or park farther away, he could, <coughs> excuse me, have a drop off opportunity or option. Um, but staff is willing to work with the applicant. I know that he expressed, um, you know, how the neighbors have a lot of parking on their property. I mean, you know, we would, we could look at something else that would, would differ from a variance request. Right. Um, like I said, variance requests are, are, are very hard because they, they must meet the, all the standards. And so yeah, the standard is very strict. It is very strict. And, and I do, I, you know, posting the signs out on the property, um, I, and I, and I do drive 2100 South quite a bit. So I sympathize with it, with the applicant that that is, it is a big issue. The, the traffic there is crazy and it is, it is very dangerous. However, it's not something that only the applicant deals with. Most of the, of the property owners on that street deal with that problem. So this was really hard, but we do need to go with the standards for the variance. Okay, thank you. I'll hear from the applicant now. Okay, um, so the number 
Number one reason why we are requesting this variance is for the safety of our family. Um, so this is the second reason we would also request this variance would be safety for other community members. Um, and you know, reading through the staff report, I know that obviously there's the recommendation to deny the request. Um, the staff staff report is indicating that there's no hardship and no circumstance pe peculiar to our property. And I would contest these two statements. Um, that's my basis for having this um, variance approved because while most of the properties along 2100 South share a similar flow of traffic, we're located in an area where our property is unique. And I would call it peculiar as peculiar circumstance where we have the incoming traffic from 1900 East. If you look at the map that's in the report, the staff report, um, trying to look at what page is, I think the second page, you can see where 1900 East connects with 2100 South and where our property is located in relation to 1900 East. I did East. look at that map. So we not only most of the properties on 2100 South are going to be dealing with, you know, one direction of traffic. They're looking at the, the you know the the lane that they're backing into. We have to also not you know not only look at the traffic coming from you know both directions on 2100 South, but also have to look at that lane of traffic that's turning left off to off 1900 East. You know, I look at other streets that are similar to 1900 East from flow of traffic from from north to south, you look at 1500 east, 1700 east, 1900 east, on, along 1700 south, they all have stop signs there. Those are all large enough streets that they have stop signs where all those other streets connect to 2100 south, 1500 east, or 1700 east, they have traffic lights. 1900 east is the exception that there's no traffic light. There's still a large flow of traffic that comes off of that street, and we see accidents there on almost a monthly basis mm -hmm. and part, part of the reason die. yeah part of the reason why we requested this is we've seen a fatal accident right here in this you know basically in our front yard within the last what was it year and a half ago someone died in front of us yeah so you know it, it makes it ex much more difficult to back out onto the street having to watch so many different directions of traffic that like i said other other properties along 2100 South don't have that circumstance that they have to deal with. Right. Um, and Can you and back it, into your driveway? It's extremely difficult just because the traffic moves so quickly. Mm -hmm. Our neighbor next door does that on occasion. This is the neighbor to the east, but she has to do it like late at night when traffic has died down and she's only got one car. And she's going where, to take it. And she, my wife's just telling me that she was told that she almost got a ticket from the police when she was trying to do that. I can't do it. So, because it, you know, disrupts the flow of traffic because you basically have to stop on a busy road okay. and then try to back in. And she can only do that at certain times of the day. She's got one vehicle. She lives by herself right now. We have a family of six and three vehicles. And it's, you know, to be able to do that with three vehicles all day long would be an even bigger safety concern than just backing out, I would believe. So. Um, okay, so I understand the hardship and you're yeah. saying it's peculiar because of its location on the road. Um, Correct. So are there any other um, issues that you disagree with in the staff report? Yeah, the other, the other thing that um, the staff report says specifically that, you know, like in relation to the substantial property right possessed by other properties in the same district and it kind of, to me, it feels like you know, it's not personal, but it, to me, it feels like there's the four other properties that are look, you know, notated in the report that have circular driveways along 2100 South. It doesn't state that there were any permits found for any of those properties, but yet they have that, they are enjoying the right that I'm trying to uh, apply for through the correct process, right? So either those properties, you know, did the work without a permit or they did it prior to the requirement. I know for a fact that one of them was within the last, you know, five or six years when they put in their circular driveway. So I know that requirement would have been in place. So they probably just did it without a permit. Um, the only the only property of the four that ha that has complied with the specific requirement I'm trying to appeal and you know ha have the variance for um, doesn't meet other requirements that, that I became aware of through the permitting process. What one of one specifically is 
five foot distance from like a water meter, their water meter is right in their driveway approach. So obviously they didn't meet that requirement. So um, I'm trying to do whatever I can to do this, you know, legally the right way, you know, and it kind of feels like I could have just done this. Right. And it looked like you've sort of started the process. Yeah, we started the process and obviously there's modification. If we had this approved, there would be further modifications from what our kind of design was because of, like I stated, you know, the requirement of the water meter. Right now, we, we kind of planned it like three feet from the water meter. We've got to move it to five feet to meet that other requirement, which is doable. The reason why we're asking for a variance for this particular requirement is because it's not something we can actually comply with and, you know, kind of take care of this, this request to be able to more safely enter the, the street. That makes sense. So, can I invite you, any of you, to come to my house and park in my driveway and try to back off? My children experienced and saw someone dying in the street. It's a safety issue. So please just consider that. I, I mean, and and part of the, part of the other thing is, you know, obviously closer to the stoplights as people are accelerating, they're moving slightly slower. We're kind of right in the middle of two stoplights. You know, that stoplight 1700 East, 2100 South, where people are kind of moving full speed. Um, just yesterday, I was trying to cross the road, the crosswalk to get to the other side of the of 2100 South, just walking with my dog and my five year old. And there's a lighted crosswalk there. I pushed the button and I pushed the button where probably cars were like two blocks away. Mm -hmm. And they didn't stop. Like there were four cars that had taken off from 1700 East moving east. It didn't stop at all, and four cars blew right past. We all we all suffer with that problem when we're on foot. And and, and we're waving. So, I'm, I'm waving yeah. a flag at them. The lights are going off, and they just don't stop. So I mean, it's that type of traffic that we're dealing with. And then you have the addition of 1900s turning into our street. Like I said, this unique. Years past, we actually had somebody driving recklessly on 1900s that got high centered on the on the retaining wall in our front yard yeah and um, it, it, so i mean there there's it's it's a highly used road on 1900 east that people still drive kind of crazy on that road as well and we have to, we are the ones that that help to put the track the cross light because it was approved years ago and when when we requested like we're you know it took so long for the city to put that traffic light we fight for that and finally it's there what happened someone crash into it <laughs> i mean it's it's a safety issue and we're, we're definitely aware of, of, of the safety i mean the city you, you know lynn jacobs with the city has been you know talking directly with my wife quite a bit and he has expressed his desires to improve the safety along the street but even with his plans of putting in a median which would make things a lot safer because that that's you know, that would be great if the city can actually do it. Last time they, they tried to do that, it was overturned by the city council because they had kind of a public uproar that people want to treat, you know, too many people who are the opinion that 21st South it should be more like a freeway and be able to you know, drive at high speeds. And they think that if, if you reduce the lanes that, you know, erroneously, they think that if you reduce the lanes and add the turning lane, that it would be slower moving and but they don't realize that the lack of the turn lane is what causes a lot of the issues on 2100 South, right? So the people are moving east in the in the left lane, and then they're stopping to turn left into 1900 East. There's people are in that lane moving at high speeds. That as soon as they see someone that's about to turn left, moving north on 1900 East, they swerve right around them, not even slowing down, and come right into the lane of traffic that's closest to our property, and and that's. You know, that's the main, that's where this whole start started with me pulling a permit. You know, if I had been on a different street, I probably would have just done the work myself, honestly, just being honest. But knowing the reason why I wanted to pull a permit is because I wanted to know if people are doing that kind of thing on 21 hours south and I've got a cement truck sitting right there. I want to make sure that I've done the, what I need to do right. to safely get that set up with the city, coordinate with the city so I can block the lane of traffic temporarily while we pour mm -hmm. concrete and not cause a safety issue. You know what I mean? So yes. I don't want to be the cause of a safety issue when I'm trying to do something to improve my safety, so. Okay, anything else? Okay. Any, anything else? Oh, go I, ahead. 
one, one I just want to make sure that you are yeah, able one more to say what that you need to say. Wasn't, wasn't like my prior email correspondence or my original request is um, after reading the, the staff report, I noted, I didn't know before that, you know, obviously the setback requirement for the circular driveway in my area for residential is 15 feet. I noted that the commercial districts, the circular driveway is only five feet, which is exactly what I'm asking for. So I'm just asking for something that is currently exists for commercial districts to be granted to me here in the residential district, you know, so that we can safely exit our driveway. And, and we have a lot of support from our neighbors that live on 21st that they know, they know what it needs to be done for the safety of the street. And I, I invite you, Ms. Martinez, come, come to my house, you know, like, please try to back up from my driveway. And if we have children, we have teenagers, we have little ones, it's, it's a safety and they already experienced it's a trauma. They saw someone dying in the street. And we're trying to improve to make it better. I'm, I'm always, I'm involved in school. I'm involved with my street neighbors to make 21st safe. I call the police many times. We have this traffic light, like the, the one sensory to slow down. And I mean, we're trying everything that we can. We, we love the neighborhood. We want to stay, but we want to make it safe. So help us with that. I, I, I don't know what else to do. You know, it's for our family, for our community. Okay. And some of the alternatives that we see, you know, like, even if the city goes through with the plan to to make the safe the street a little bit safer with the with the turn lane. We still have the issue of 1900 East, you know, even if that gets approved when they try to resurface the road after a sewer project next year. We still have the turning traffic from 1900 East that we have to deal with and backing out. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still going to have to be watching multiple directions, which can be hectic and. You know. Okay. Well, thank you. In, anything yeah. else from the city? Um, we do have three attendees in the attendings list and one okay. has got their hand raised. Okay. So I will open the public hearing and um, I will give anyone who wants to make public comment two minutes. Okay. I'm going to start with Willow Jepson. Um, I have to make you a panelist because I'm not able to unmute you. Um, once I make you a panelist, you can mute and unmute yourself. You will be given two minutes to speak. And you are a panelist now. Um, there might be a little phone icon that says connect to audio um, below your name. And if you're going to speak, identify yourself for the record, please. Um, sure. My name is Willow Jepson and I live on 20th East just a couple of blocks away from the right. Um, so I have lived in this neighborhood. I've lived in this home for 16 years and I'm very familiar with the property. I have been friends with the rights for years. So I have pulled into their driveway numerous times. I've also pulled into other driveways along 21st. And I, I completely agree with them that the 19th East feeding into almost right into their driveway is definitely um, a, a factor in what makes it so dangerous to pull in and out of their driveway. I, I don't ever do it anymore, actually. I, I park on the street that's half a block away from them, either above or below, and walk there. Or if I'm bringing my children or picking up their children, we just park half a block away and have them walk because it feels so dangerous because, and I'm, I mean, I'm, I've been driving for over 30 years. I'm a very confident driver. I, I know other, you know, there are other properties on 20th, 21st South, sorry, that I will pull into and out of um, because I only have to deal with the traffic that's running east and west. But when you're dealing with the traffic running east and west and also the traffic coming from 19th East, it's just too heavy and too many directions. And I think that their request is very reasonable. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else who'd like to speak? Um, nobody else has raised their hand, but I am going to make them a panelist anyway to give them the opportunity. Okay. We'll, we'll give them a minute. Tom Curlich, I'm making you a panelist. Would you like to speak on this item tonight?
Yes, this is Tom Krelich. Can you hear me? Yes, you'll be yes. given two minutes. Thank you. I apologize. I had some audio difficulties. Um, as a as a neighbor of the rights, I've lived in the Sugar House area for close to 20 years. I travel 2100 South probably eight times a day. And I, I've had the opportunity to drive into their driveway, and it is extremely difficult. Okay, they did a good job of explaining the issue. Coming off in 1900 East, is extremely difficult okay it brings a lot of additional traffic in i see no reason why they should not be allowed to make it safer for themselves and their fine uh, family getting in and out of their own driveway i would also have to echo the fact of to back into their driveway is almost nearly impossible okay maybe after 11 p.m and before 6 a.m but anytime during normal business hours extremely difficult so I, I would support the rights in this request. That's all. Thank you. Okay, we've got Peter Torres. Um, again, I'm not able to unmute you. I don't see a hand raised, but I'm gonna make you a panelist and give you the opportunity to speak. Um, you have been made a panelist. If you see a little phone icon um, somewhere near your name, you should be able to unmute yourself. Hi, thanks, uh, Peter Torres. I'm I'm also a longtime resident of the neighborhood and a uh, friend of the rights. I've lived in that uh, specific neighborhood for 40 plus years, um, and I've seen. I would just I think Chris did a perfect job of of explaining what the issues are specific to them, and I would just add that you know the increase in in traffic on 21st South, especially over the last few years, is you know, I, I grew up in the neighborhood. It, it's, it's n not even comparable what it is today. Um, you know, and so to expect any other kind of safe entry or, or exit from their property. And I've, I too have pulled into the rights home and tried, and it's, it's, you're taking your life into your hands and, you know, I can't imagine, you know, expecting my teenage drivers to do that uh, at any point. Uh, because I've done it as an adult with, you know, 30 plus years of driving experience and it's, it's a scary thing. So I don't, uh, I would just encourage also a variance being approved for, for this unique and special circumstance. Thank you. Thank you. And I see there's no one else um, in the attendees list. Okay, I'm gonna close the public hearing and um, bring it back to the city if you have anything else to add. Just a comment. I mean, again, um, staff is very sympathetic to the, the tra traffic issues that 2100 South has in addition to 900 or 1900 East. Um, this is not a subjective recommendation. Um, this is solely based on the ordinance a variance is granted if it meets all of the standards for um, approval. And unfortunately, we are recommending denial based on them not meeting the standards. Okay. Anything else from the applicant? Okay, I'm gonna- Not this time. Okay, Thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and take this matter under advisement. I'll issue a written decision. Um, I do want to remind everyone that this is not about me making a policy judgment. I don't have that authority about what the right outcome is or what my preferred outcome is. My job is to look at the ordinance and see if the facts meet the ordinance. And I will issue a decision based on that. I sometimes think variance is a bad word for this kind of legal exception because it does kind of imply some sort of subjectivity or leeway on my part. And I don't have a lot of leeway, but I think these are very compelling facts and I'll look at the ordinance and um, like I said, review this and issue a written decision. So I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and thank everyone for coming. I appreciate everyone's efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.